if you don't choose to take this deal, remember what happened to Mohammed Mossadegh in Iran. Remember what happened to Salvador Allende in Chile. Remember what happened to Arbenz in Guatemala and Ziem in Vietnam and Lumumba in the Congo. These are all presidents or prime ministers who refused to play the game and were taken out in coups or assassinations. I'm going to expose a very dark side of Western foreign policy. Now we'll see just what I mean by that in a second. And I'm going to play a clip from the PBD podcast that exemplifies the horrific dark side of Western foreign policy. They don't only start wars, bribe people. It goes much deeper than that. And we'll see what their evil master plan is, what they've done in places like South America, in the Middle East, in their colonialization of these different regions and countries, and just exactly what their plan is. We're going to see it from somebody firsthand who's done these things on the ground. It's not just a mere conspiracy theory or speaking about things without facts or evidence. We're going to show you someone who admits to being part of this himself. But so there were all the, you know, there were very strict anti-corruption laws in the United States in those days, and I guess they still are. But there's so many ways to get around them, and we, we knew all those ways to get around them. So you go in and you tell the president this. You say, so buy, buy into this loan. And he says, but we're going to take on this huge debt, and it means we're going to have to take money away from education and social services and, and health care to, to pay the interest on the debt. And we say, yes, but you're going to make a lot of money, you and your family. So he knows that he's doing something that's probably not going to help his people, but it's going to help him. And then you also say, but if you don't choose to take the road, the, the, uh, if you don't choose to take this deal, remember what happened to Mohammed Mossadegh in Iran. Remember what happened to Salvador Allende in Chile. Remember what happened to Arbenz in Guatemala and Ziem in Vietnam and Lumumba in the Congo. These are all presidents or prime ministers who refused to play the game and were taken out in coups or assassinations. And so basically we're saying, remember there's people we call jackals behind the scenes. So basically I'm saying, hey, Mr. President, in this hand, I'm offering you a lot of money for you and your friends. But in the, and if you choose not to take it in this hand, I got a gun. No, I didn't actually carry a gun, but I knew those guys were basically CIA assets behind me that had guns. And you know, the classic case, of the original case was, was Kermit Roosevelt who, who overthrew Prime Minister Mossadegh in Iran and replaced him with the Shah. And that, was, that set a precedent. And wow. these presidents all know this. They know, they know the history. They know they will be taken out. If, so, so what's the choice, you know, Patrick? What would you do? This guy is John Perkins. He wrote a book which is called The Economic Hitman. And he was an economic hitman for a long time, for several years for the U.S. And his job was to go to these foreign nations to basically bribe them, to give them a deal, to say, okay, here's the way that we can quote unquote improve your economy. And there would be deals offered to these countries and to these foreign leaders, presidents, prime ministers, kings, etc. And if they chose to not listen to them or accept their deal, what did he say? They would be killed and they would be replaced by somebody else who's willing to do their bidding. Western countries like the U.S. and the U.K. and France and all these different countries, they've done these things for a long time. And we're seeing a guy, John Perkins, who was an economic hitman, wrote an entire book demonstrating and explaining the details of what he used to do. And he's saying, look, I didn't carry a gun in my hand, but I would tell these people and they knew exactly what would happen if they refused to accept my deal. But anyway, let's take a listen further as he goes into a bit more detail. Let me ask you, when you are saying it, how are you saying it to me? Like, I know the way you just said it right now. How would you say it to me if I'm the Shah of Iran and you're sitting with me and you're telling me here's the options? Let me, if you if you could role play with me, what would it be like? How would you well, say it? First, yeah, first of all, the Shah, we didn't we didn't play quite that game because he had plenty of money. He didn't have to take a loan. We were just trying to convince him that he he ought to work with us rather than the Soviet Union. That he ought to, you know, we, we wanted his oil, and we were willing to help him westernize his country, and we didn't want he didn't want to go to the Soviet route. So that was a little bit different. We'll, we'll get but to that say, in a minute. Give me an example of somebody who you did 
What yeah, so let's, say I'm talking, let's say I'm talking to you. You're you're you're, you're the president of Colombia. Okay. Uh, and and we, we want to get at your resources there. And and, I, and I'm saying to you, I'm showing you all these fancy reports that show how well your country's going to do. And you can show these reports to your press and to your people. You can convince your people that by taking on these loans, you're helping the country. You're going to build these big dams. You're going to build these big electrical systems, whatever. So you get in, in, you get all the material you need here. And and it, it's usually a series of meetings, maybe some of them over lunch with a few cocktails, et cetera. And the president's maybe like a little, and then you, you just sort of subtly start talking about, you, somehow you bring up the topic of what happened recently to Salvador Allende in Chile, or what happened to Arbenz in Guatemala, depending on what part of the world you're in, you, you talk about these people and you say, you know, isn't that a shame? And you, you talk a little bit about this. And, you know, depending on the president, different presidents, you, you approach differently. And, but they get it. I mean, they know the history. It doesn't, you know, these guys yeah. know, what, know what's going on and their advisors know what's going on. And they're usually sitting there at the meetings too, some pretty smart advisors who probably, you know, been to business school, the same business schools that I went to and so forth. Oh. And there, everybody's, you know, I, I speak Spanish, but half, most of the people in the room can speak English too. And they, they fit, you know, they get the same background. But I will say, Patrick, and I mentioned, I talk in the book about two presidents who did not play the game. Uh, democratically elected president of Ecuador, Jaime Roldos, and the head of state of Panama, Omar Torrijos. They had tremendous integrity. They saw what I was trying to do, and they didn't do it. And they, they, they understood the dangers they were taking, and they talked about these things. And both of them were, were, I believe, assassinated. They were, they were both taken out in two, almost a little over two months apart from each other in 1981. They were taken out in, in their private planes in Ecuador first with Jaime Roldos. His, his private plane crashed, very suspicious circumstances. And less than three months later, same thing happened to Omar Torrijos in Panama. These were the only two guys that stood up to this, that said, we're not buying these deals. And in fact, made a big point, uh, public relations. They, they went out there and made very strong statements and they set examples for the world. And they were taken out in these plane crashes. And although there was never a smoking gun found because in a plane crash, the smoking gun goes up in smoke. Um, plane crashes, private plane crashes are the best way to assassinate someone if you ever, decide you want to do that. <laughs> and uh, because of the evidence is gone, but in the case of, of uh, it, uh, it, it, one of those cases, Jaime Roldos, the, the, the plane's engines were sent to a laboratory in, 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 in Switzerland, or Sweden, Switzerland, um, and they concluded that the plane had not crashed, it had blown up in the air. And so, um, and, th and there was tremendous other evidence. There's tremendous evidence that, 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 that points to these having been assassinations. So there you have it. I mean, he goes into a lot more detail. Really, the interview and discussion is fascinating. But it exposes a really dark side of Western foreign policy, and specifically the United States. They employ people like this guy, John Perkins, who is an economic hitman, to go to these foreign countries, to sit down with them and say, look, this is what we need you to do. You need to accept these loans. We will loan you money and you need to do X, Y, Z with it. And we'll help you out with X, Y, Z, supposedly. And if you don't, I'll just remind you of this president that mysteriously died in a plane crash. And it was such a shame, you know, basically letting them know, hey, buddy, if you don't do this, you're next. This is what's going to happen to you, too. And this isn't a conspiracy theory. This is a guy that this was actually his job to do this for several years. You know, people talk about these things sometimes as sort of conspiracy theories, but it's a reality when you see somebody who it was actually his job to do the bidding of the U.S. in this fashion that it becomes a serious reality. And now, should we be so confused as to why many Muslim nations and Muslim rulers seem to be in cooperating at the very least, with the agendas of foreign governments like the U.S. and the U.K. and these other places, they're being pressured. Maybe they're being threatened. I don't know all the details on what's going on in each country, but I'm saying this has happened before, and I'm sure it's currently going on in many places. They just went over how it happened in Iran. 
And there are many other countries where this has taken place, not only Muslim countries, to be sure. You talk about a lot of countries in South America where this has happened. Basically, a method of extortion, right, to get the resources of these foreign countries, get their money, basically have them on the hook to make sure that they do whatever the U.S. tells them to. And if they don't, they'll get rid of you in one way or another and have you replaced by somebody who is willing to do their bidding. It might sound scary. It might sound conspiratorial. But when you see somebody like John Perkins actually speaking about this, you realize that it's not conspiracy. It's a sad reality. And the Muslims need to unite against this. You know, we need to find a way to actually unite against this. But obviously, the first step is educating the public about what actually is going on. So I suggest that people watch the full video and look more into this John Perkins economic hitman on the PBD podcast. Not that I want to promote this podcast, but this specific video. If you're interested in reading, I recommend reading his book on the subject as well. And I hope that this video educates my audience and that you guys look more into these subjects and realize that this is not just a conspiracy. This is serious and we need to come up with a action plan to combat what's actually going on. With that being said, guys, I thank you all for watching and your continued support. But until next time, inshallah, I'll see you all again then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.